Welcome to Prelude to Ulysses. This is Late Night with Vernal Guba. Maybe, uh, maybe this is, uh... Alright, let's get going. This is Prelude to Ulysses, the thing that we do where we read stuff. Out loud for the benefit. Just the benefit of reading. I don't think I'm going to read this one, uh oh, but I need to. Uh, it's kind of long. Mm. It's called Unhappiness by Franz Kafka. Ugh. Unhappiness. When it was becoming unbearable. Once toward evening in November. And I ran along the narrow strip of carpet in my room. As on a racetrack. Shrank from the sight of the lit up street. Then turning to the interior of the room. Found a new goal. In the depths of the looking glass. And screamed aloud. To hear only my own screams, which met no answer, nor anything that could draw its force away. So that it rose up without check and could not stop even when it ceased being audible. The door in the wall opened toward me. How swiftly, because swiftness was needed and even the cart horses down below on the paving stones were rising in the air, like horses driven wild in battle, their throats bare to the enemy. All right, this one paragraph of unhappiness. So when it was becoming unbearable, we can assume he means his own depression or unhappiness. Kind of is a manic, unhappy person and will trace circles in his carpets, running in circles. Perhaps saw something in a looking glass. I don't know if that's a mirror glass or glass glass and screamed aloud, maybe their own face or maybe their future. Maybe, what's a looking glass for? Is that a thing that people have? Morbidity. For my sighted viewers, I'm showing a picture of a what they think a mandolin player looks like. Um, I don't think that's how most people play the mandolin. With your hand out, strumming it. Is that, do I have a mandolin? Do I have a mandolin?
Looking glass, a mirror, the glass used on a mirror. Interesting. I was right. So you look at yourself in the mirror feeling so sad and in circular motion, you start screaming, but you're so alone that the there's nothing to stop the scream. And then it's so crazy, it blew the window open and cart horses were jumping. That's the scream. Like a small ghost, a child blew in from the pitch dark corridor where the lamp was not yet lit and stood in a tiptoe. It stood a tiptoe on a floor, bored, and stood a tiptoe on the floorboard that quivered imperceptibly. How could you perceive of that? It's imperceptible, right? How, why would you even describe it that way? So some kid cruised in. At once dazzled by the twilight in my room, she made to cover her face quickly with her hands, but contented herself unexpectedly with it. What the fuck am I saying? At once dazzled by the twilight in my room, she made to cover her face quickly with her hands, but contented herself unexpectedly with a glance at the window where the mounting vapor of the street lightning lighting had at last settled under its cover of darkness behind the crossbars. With her right elbow, she supported herself against the wall in the open doorway and let the drought draught from outside play along her ankles, her throat, and her temples. So there's a kid in there. Hmm. Uh, 
like a small ghost a child blew in and staring out the window or something. I don't know. I gave her a brief glance and then said good day and took my jacket from the hood of the stove since I didn't want to stand there half undressed. What is this? For a little while, this is unhappiness. I don't want to read this. It's Kafka pedophile. Pedophondler. For a little while, I let my mouth hang open so that my agitation could find a way out. I had a bad taste in my mouth. Me too. This is dirty as shit. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Um, my eyelashes were fluttering on my cheeks. What? How do you, how do you even do that? How do you get your cheek high enough to touch your eyeball? It was really long eyelashes. In short, this visit, though I had expected it, was the one thing needful. Not gonna fucking what? What is going on? The child was still standing by the wall on the same spot. She had pressed her right hand against the plaster and was quite taken up with finding her cheeks all pink that the white washed walls had a rough surface and chafed her fingers. I said, Are you really looking for me? Isn't there some mistake? Nothing easier than to make a mistake in this big building. I'm called so-and-so, and and I live on the third floor. Am I the person you want to find? That's how I feel about this story so far. The malign fart that is this note. The rusted reed that farts. (laughs) Hush, hush, said the child over her shoulder. It's all right. Then come farther into the room. I'd like to shut the door if this gets goes where it seems like it's going. I don't want to read it. Just screaming into the air? And then that means what? You've summoned a child? Is that how babies are made?
I've shut it this very minute. Don't bother. Just be easy in your mind. It's no bother, but there's a lot of people living on this corridor. And I know them all, of course. Most of them are coming back from work now. If they hear someone talking in a room, they simply think they have a right to open the door and see what's happening. They're just like that. guy uh oh corridor they want to come in and you turn your head and they want to come in and see what's happening they're just like that they've turned their backs on the daily work and in their preventionally free evenings they're not going to be dictated to by anyone besides you know that as well as i do let me shut the door <laughs> what I'm so I'm sorry, I forgot what we're down here. So I don't know what the fuck he just said. He's trying to get this kid in his room. This is fucked up. Why? What's... Is it? Or am I just... Of this... Century. And am weary. Weary of predation. Why, what's the matter with you? I don't mind if the whole house comes in.
Anyhow, as I've told you, I've already shut the door. Do you think... Wait, anyway, I don't mind if the whole house comes in. I've already shut the door, and do you think you're the only person who can shut doors? I've even turned the key in the lock. I think this is the kid talking. That's all right, then. I couldn't ask for more. You didn't need to turn the key either. And now that you're here, make yourself comfortable. You are my guest. You can trust me entirely. Just make yourself at home and don't be afraid. I won't compel you either to stay or go away. Do I, I have to tell you that? Do you really know me so little? No, you really didn't need to tell me that. What's more, you shouldn't have told me. I'm just a child. Hmm. Why stand on so much ceremony with me? It's not as bad as that child, of course, but not so very small. You're quite big. If you were a young lady, I wouldn't, you wouldn't dare to lock yourself so simply in a room with me. We needn't worry about that. I just want to say, my knowing you so well isn't much protection to me. It only relieves you of the effort of keeping up pretenses before me. And yet you're paying me a compliment. Stop it. I beg you, do stop it. Anyhow, I don't know you everywhere and all the time. Least of all, in this darkness, it would be much better if you were to light up. No, perhaps not. At any rate, I'll keep it in mind that you have been threatening me. What? Am I supposed to have threatened you? But look here, I'm so pleased that you've come at last. I say, at last, because it is already rather late. I can't understand why you've come so late, but it's possible that in the joy of seeing you, I have been speaking at random, and you took up my words in the wrong sense. I'll admit ten times over that I said something of the kind. I've made all kinds of threats, anything you like. What the fuck? Only no quarreling, for heaven's sake. But how could you think of such a thing? How could you hurt me so? Why do you insist on spoiling this brief moment of your presence here? That I can believe. That's no great discovery. No stranger could come any nearer to you than I already am by nature. You know that too. So why all this perhaps? Pathos. Pathos. What's pathos? Pathos. 
pseudomorph. It's an irregular or unclassifiable form. Number two, a mineral having the outward appearance of another mineral that it has replaced. What are we looking at? Power washer? Pathos. Whole tree, popcorn, pop fly. Nice. PowerPoint? No. No. Pasta. Paradigm? Pathos. doesn't show up in here. Oh, yes, it does. Maybe I've been misspelling things and thinking they weren't in the dictionary. Pathos. Number one, the quality or power in life or art of evoking a feeling of pity or compassion. Number two, pity. I think pity and compassion are not always intertwined. You can be compassionate and pitiful, but you can't be pitifully compassionate. What the fuck are you saying? What is the difference between pity and compassion? Pity is a feeling of empathy about a person, a negative feeling of empathy, being like, I'm glad, or that, that sucks for that person. Feeling sad for somebody because something's... I don't know, pity's not loss. It's not accepting grief, right? Pity is like unearned. Well, I don't know. Or no, it's like earned. What is pity? It's like when someone deserves pity, because you deserve pity, right? What is pity? It's not when you feel bad about someone. Com that's compassion. Compassion is when you have empathy and feelings of something. It could be positive or negative. Like if you're comp you can feel pity as a part of feeling compassion. But pity in itself is something else. Pity, 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 pity. What does pity mean? I can't describe it at all. Pity is when you who would you pity? I guess someone who is causing their own problems. Right? We're all a little pitiful, aren't we? If you're only wanting to stage a comedy, I'll go away immediately. What? You have... I'm, so I'm trying to do different voices for the different people talking. Maybe that's a clear thing. Maybe it's not. What? You have all the impudence to tell me. You make a little... T what the fuck is this? What? I don't want to look up impudence. I don't think that's a word I want to know. Fuck that word. Impudence? Full of pudding. That's what it means. If you're... What? You have all the impudence to tell me... All, all filled with pudding to tell me that? You make a little too bold after all. It's my room you're in. Maybe Russia is just like a fucking zoo of people cruising in and out of each other's houses. <laughs> zoo? No, that's not the right word. Like, no one has a house. It's all just temporary where you're at. <laughs> maybe maybe the Russia is a nomad nation. I don't know. How, what do you know about Russian houses? I live in one. There's a Russian house. But, um... Uh, what? Okay. Uh, 
you say your nature what where's the impudent word pudding you make a little too bold it's my wall you're rubbing your fingers on like mad oh this person likes the texture of the wall i forgot my room my wall and besides what you are saying is ridiculous as well it's impudent damn it full of pudding you say your nature forces you to speak to me like that i don't know, I don't know. speak like what <laughs> is he being offended she's been a weird kind of Your nature forces you. That's kind of your nature. Your nature is mine. And if I feel friendly to you by nature, then you mustn't be anything else. What? I control you with my presumptions. 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 I, my presumptions should not control reality. They shouldn't. For realsies. Mm. Oh my god, this will take forever. It's like 40 more pages. Is that friendly? She says. I'm speaking of earlier on. Do you know how I'll be later on? I don't know anything. And I went to the bed table and lit the candle on it. At that time, I had neither gas nor electric light in my room. Then I sat for a while at the table until I got tired of it. <laughs> uh, cool hobbies. Russian hobbies. Just sit somewhere. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit at this table. So this table. Squeaks. This table's going to break someday. What were you talking about? I oh, just sitting at tables. <laughs> How boring is that? Then I sat for a while at the table till I got tired of it. Put on my great coat. <whistles> Took my hat from the sofa and blew out the candle. As I went out, I tripped over the leg of a chair. On the stairs, I met one of the tenants. So he just left this kid in his room? On the stairs, I met one of my tenants from my floor. Going out again already, you rascal, he asked, pausing with his legs firmly straddled over two steps. What can I do? I've just had a ghost in my room. You say that exactly as if you had just found a hair in your soup. You're making a joke, but let me tell you, a ghost is a ghost. How true, but what if one doesn't believe in ghosts at all? Well, you think I believe in ghosts? But how can my not believing help me? Quite simply, you don't need to feel afraid if a ghost actually turns up. Oh, it's only a secondary fear. I think I switched the voices. Just relax, don't worry. The real fear is a fear of what caused the apparition. And that fear doesn't go away. I have it fairly powerfully inside me now. Out of sheer nervousness, I began to hunt through all my pockets. But since you weren't afraid of the ghost itself... You could have easily asked it how it came to be there. Obviously, you've never spoken to a ghost, but one never gets straight information from them. It's just a hither and thither. These ghosts seem to be more dubious about their existence than we are. And no wonder, considering how frail they are. But I've heard that one can fatten them up. Well, how informed you are. It's quite true. But is anyone likely to do it? Why not? If it were a feminine ghost, for instance, said he, swinging onto the top step. Aha, said I, but even then, it's not worthwhile. I thought of something else. My neighbor was already so far up the 
up that in order to see me, he had to bend over the wall, over the well of the staircase. You hear how I can snap my fingers and eat? It's a trick I learned. Bend over the well of the staircase. All the same, I called up. If you steal my ghost from me, all is over between us forever. Oh, I was only joking, he said, and drew his head back. That's all right, said I. And now I really could have gone quietly for a walk. But because I had felt so forlorn, I preferred to go upstairs again. And went to bed. Well, I end up liking it. I like that conversation at the end. Um, I was definitely worried he was going to, that that was a real child. And there's something weird going on. I'm glad that didn't happen. I ended up liking it. I'm very surprised Kafka's not... Not my boat of tea, not my tea boat, you know what I mean? I did have a mandolin. I need a pick for this. This is an electric mandolin. Here's a pick. Looks a lot like me, actually. 